Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to be solving some of the hard questions from integration from Pure Maths 3. And I've sorted about five somewhat difficult questions. So let's start off with the first question. It's from specimen paper of 2020. Right. So first question, what are they asking? The diagram shows the curve y is equal to sine squared 2x cos x. And x is between 0 and half pi. And its maximum point m is given. So therefore the derivative over here d by dx is going to be 0. Right. Because it's the max point. Okay. And uh, the question is asking you to find the x coordinate of m. For this, of course, you need to differentiate. And if you want to skip this part, you can fast forward to part b. All right. I'll still show you this part. How do you um, differentiate? Very simple. Um, you're going to differentiate this part, which is going to be 2 times sine 2x and what's the differentiation of this part it's going to be cos 2 sorry cos 2x and what's the differentiation of 2x it's going to be 2 times don't forget about this part cos x plus again plus um, keep the sine squared 2x as it is times the differentiation of cos x is going to be minus sin x, right? Okay, so if you put this minus sin in front, you're going to be having minus sin x sin squared to x, right? Okay, so this is the equation that you get. And now you can... Uh, what can you do? Um, you can clean the expression up and write 4 sine 2x times cos 2x times cos x. This and this over here. And 2 times 2 is 4. And this sine 2x is over here. Fair enough. So next what do you do? Um, you're going to put this on this side. Why? Because your gradient at m is going to be 0, right? Gradient at m is going to be 0 and we're finding for x when the gradient is 0, the max point, which is why we've plugged in uh, y prime or the mag, um, your gradient as 0. So we can take this to the other side over here and you're going to get sine x times sine square 2x is equals to cos 2x times cos x times 4 sine 2x. And since you have sine squared 2x on this side and sine 2x on this side, cancel one of the sine 2x over from here and cancel sine 2x from this side. And you're going to be left with sine x times sine 2x on the left hand side. On, on the right hand side, you're going to have 4 times cos 2x cos x and you can bring the cos 2x in the left hand side and divide this by cos x and sine 2x by cos 2x and that's going to give you tan x tan x and tan 2x and leave the 4 as it is on the right hand side okay so, now we have a, an expression in terms of tan x and tan 2x, right? Now, how do you uh, break the tan 2x? Use the double angle formula, which is basically um, tan 2a is identical to 2 tan a divided by 1 minus tan squared a. So, you can use this formula over here and what you get is tan x times 2 tan x divided by 1 minus tan squared x is equals to of course 4. Now very simply take this on the right hand side and what happens then multiply and you'll get 4 minus 4 tan squared x 
Now solve for x. Take the 4 on the other side and you will have minus 4 tan square x plus 2 tan square x and it's going to give you 6 tan square x is equals to 4. Now simply take a root over to cancel out the square and you'll be getting root 2 by 3. And now uh, use tan inverse to get x is equals to 0.685. Great. So now we can move on to the main part, the integration. And what are they asking you to do? Use substitution u is equals to sine x to find the area of the shaded region bounded by the curve and the x-axis. So they're asking you to integrate from um, a zero uh, to half pipe, right? They're asking you to find the area. Okay, so before that, you know that you can't, can't integrate this expression as it is, right? You would either have to do um, integration by parts or you can use substitution, u substitution. So in this case, since they're asking you to use u is equals to sine x, you can simply go on and use u is equals to sine x to uh, find it, find a suitable expression to be able to integrate. So what is it going to be? You know u is equals to sine x, they've given you that. And you can find du by dx, which is going to help you later on. du by d, uh, dx is going to be cos x. And so the expression for dx is going to be du by cos x. So if I take the integral sign over here, you're going to get the area is equals to take the 4 outside, uh, take the 4 outside because it's a constant, it's not going to affect your integration. So what you have is sine square x times cos square x times cos x times du by cos x. Why? Because over here, instead of du by dx, there was dx. And we have re replaced dx with this expression. Right? So, we have du by cos x. You can cancel the cos x off and you'll be left with this expression. Okay, fair enough. So, now since we want to bring everything with the same trick of um, expression, you're going to turn cos squared into 1 minus sine square x to be able to integrate the whole expression, right? So cos squared x is going to be 1 minus sine squared x. And that's going to give you sine squared x minus sine to the power of 4x. Now remember, initially they had given you u is equal to sine x. So you can now substitute, you can now substitute sine x is equals to u, right? So you can write it as, you can write it as u squared minus u to the power of 4. Great. So now you have an expression that you can integrate. But you also need to remember that your limits, your bounds need to be changed according to the expression. What do I mean by that? Since you have replaced your sine x and brought in u as the variable, your limits will change. How? Let's see. So initially, the upper bound was half pi. Notice, half pi. And you're using u is equals to sine x. When x was initially half pi, if x is half pi, what will your u be? Your u is going to be 1. Your u is going to be 1 if x is equals to half pi. Next bound, oh sorry, next limit, let's say 0. In that case, u is equals to sine of 0 and what is it? The value is supposed to be 0. Therefore, you need to now change your limits to from 0 to 1. Why? Because you have substituted sine x with u. 
Therefore, your bounds will change accordingly. So now your upper limit is 1, lower limit is 0. Fair enough, let's integrate it and it's going to be 2 plus 1 divided by 2 plus 1 minus u to the power 4 plus 1, 4 plus 1. So this is what you get. Now simply plug in the upper bound and plug in the lower bound, right? And you're going to get 1 by 3 minus 1 by 5 and multiply with 4 and your final answer is going to be 8 by 15. And that is your question 1. Okay, question 2. So for this, they're asking you um, to integrate x, sec square x from 0 to 1 fourth of a pi. Okay, so to integrate this, you need to apply, you need to apply integration by parts, right? And um, I use sort of a different formula compared to the book. So what I use is integration of uv, uv is equals to u integration of v minus differentiation of u times integration of v all times dx. This is what I use and it's just the reorganized um, expression that you would see in the book. This for me is a bit simpler to use. That's why I use this. But yeah, you can use uh, the formula written in the book as well to find the answer to this. So what am I going to use as u and what am I going to use as v? For me, the u is going to be x, y, because notice your u gets differentiated. Your u gets differentiated, which is why you eventually lose x. You eventually lose x from the expression and you get an expression that you can integrate. That is, that has the ability to be integrated, right? And uh, for v, I'm using sec square x. Why? Because you know the integration of sec square x, which is tan x. So these two are the reasons why I'm taking u as x because it gets differentiated and gets out of the equation. And v, you can integrate. Sec square, you know the integration, tan x. That's how I choose my v and u. Okay, if you know that, let's plug in the um, values, I mean expression. Okay, so if what is our u? u is going to be x, integration of v is going to be sec square x. You can directly write it as tan x because you know the integration of sec square x, right? Okay, so let's keep the integral sign. What is the differentiation of u? In our case, it's going to be 1. Okay, so let's keep it as 1 times integration of v, uh, v is going to be again tan x, right? dx. Fair enough. So this is the this is the expression we get over here. Okay, so we have sort of integrated it, but we still need to work with this part. And I have um, removed the integral side and put the bounds because only this part is left yet to be worked with. And how are we going to integrate tan x? You may notice uh, we don't know the integration of tan x and we have to break it down slightly to be able to integrate this. What do I mean by that? So write tan x as sin x divided by cos x. Why? Wait a moment. So if you do write sin x as cos x, you can use another formula. What is it? It's going to be, remember, integration of... So this is another formula that you can apply over here. Because, notice, if I write it as sin x by cos x, you can take, you can take minus common out of the equation and you'll be having minus times minus. This is going to be positive and you have a minus sign in front of your sin x. Notice why I do that. Because your denominator is cos x and your numerator is 
minus sin x. Is your numerator the derivative of your denominator? Is minus sin x the derivative of cos x? Yes. If you differentiate cos x, you get minus sin x. So you have your numerator, which is the differentiation of your denominator. So you can apply this formula now and write it as ln of denominator, ln of fx. So if you integrate this expression, you get ln fx. So in our case, what are we going to get? We're going to get ln of denominator, which is ln of cos x, right? So this is how this rule works. And if you need the explanation of why this formula exists, very simply, if you have, let's say, ln of x squared plus 1, right? And if someone asked you to find the derivative of this, uh, I mean, uh, if someone asked you to differentiate this expression, what would you do? What would you write? You would write 1 by x squared plus 1 times what is the differentiation of this expression? It's going to be 2x plus 1. So at the end of the day, what you get is 2x plus 1 by x squared plus 1. Now notice one thing. Is your numerator the derivative of your denominator? Yes, it is. So if you differentiate your denominator, you get your numerator. This is why we write f prime x divided by f of x. And if you integrate this, you get ln fx. So this is how we get the equation. Basically, so we can apply this logic over here and for I mean formula over here and you're going to get ln of cos x. Great. Now you can substitute the values of x and you're going to fight your area. So let's substitute one uh, fourth of a pi and you're going to get this. So if you basically plug in zero you're going to be left with most likely zero. Okay, right. So this is your area. You can further simplify this and take two to the power of minus half, bring the minus half in front of the long function and you're going to be left with this as your final answer as your area, right? So this is your answer for question two. Great. Okay. Question three. So in this question, what they're asking, the diagram shows a part of the curve y is equals to sine of root x. This part of the curve intersects the x-axis at point where x is equals to zero. Oh, sorry, x is equals to a. Fair enough. So state the exact value of a. What do you know about the point a? One thing you know is at this point, the y value is supposed to be zero. That's one thing you know. What's the second thing you know? Second thing you know is the that x value. Oh, they're asking you to find the x value, right? So we're going to find the value on the x-axis. How do we do that? We know one part of the information, which is y is equal to zero. So we can apply that into the equation. So you're going to see 0 is equals to sine of root x. How do we move out from this? You're going to take inverse of sine on either side for 1 to cancel the sine of because sine of sine inverse of x is going to be simply x, right? Because the sine and sine inverse will cancel each other out, right? So you're going to be having root x on one side and on the other side you have side inverse of zero now here's the interesting part so for a sine x curve the y value is zero at this point at this point and at this point so if you plug in the value um zero over here you're going to see x is equals to zero but you can clearly see a is not at x is equals to 0. Therefore, we're not going to take this value. We're going to take this. And when is um, 
sine is equals to the, uh, I mean, the y value is zero, it's going to be at zero pi or two pi, right? So these are the three uh, values from the x-axis or the uh, the three uh, degrees for which your sine value will be zero, right? So sine inverse of zero, you're going to now take it as pi. Why not two pi, if you ask? Simply because you can see it meets the curve once over here, once over here, and it has yet to meet the curve. If you extend the x-axis, it will again meet the curve on another point. And that is going to be, that is going to be um, given by this value. In that case, you will plug in 2 pi to find the value on the x-axis. But in this case, we can see this is the second time that the curve meets the x-axis. And that is also why we are going to take pi and not 2 pi. Fair enough. So we take pi as the inverse of sine inverse of 0. I've explained why. And your value of x is going to be take the square on either side and you're going to have x is equals to pi squared, right? Great. So your x is equals to pi squared. That is your answer for the x value, x coordinate of a. Okay, so second part of the question, what is it asking? Using the substitution u is equals to root x, find the exact area of the shaded region in the first quadrant bounded by this part of the curve and the x-axis. This is your equation. And what is your limit going to be? So your limit is going to be from 0 to, what is your upper limit? Yeah, pi squared. Pi squared is going to be your upper limit. So therefore, ask you to find the shaded area. Okay. So let's take lower limit as 0, upper limit as pi squared. And your expression is sine root of x. And if you try to integrate this, you can, oh, they're asking you to use u substitution. So you already have u is equals to root x. So apply that over here. And you're going to have sine of u dx. But you cannot integrate it with dx. You need to have du over here, right? So to do that, what do we do? We differentiate this value. We're going to have right over here. So du by dx is going to be the differentiation of root of x. And what is it going to be? If x to the power half is your function, the differentiation is going to be half of x to the power minus half, right? So this is your expression for the uh, differentiated value. Okay, so if you take dx on the other side and make it the subject, what is your dx going to be? It's going to be 2 times du times root of x. Okay, so let's substitute this over here. And what you get is sine of u times 2 times root of x. Now, what do you do with the root of x? You go back to the initial equation given that u is equals to root of x. So you can now substitute u instead of root x. So now you have an expression in terms of u and you have du. Great. Now you can integrate this expression. Okay, so for integrating this, you again need to do something interesting, which is integration by parts, once again. So what is your u going to be over here? If the formula for, um, I'll write the formula again. Integration of uv is going to be u integration v minus integration of derivative of u times integration v, all inside the integral. Okay. So what is what is your u? Your u is going to be simply u over here. Because if you differentiate 
if you differentiate you, you get one. So that makes it easier to integrate. And what is your V going to be? It's going to be sine u. Why? Because you know how to integrate sine u and you need to integrate V over here. So you know the integration of sine, which is minus cos x, right? Okay, so we have set our u and v expression. Now we can apply the formula, okay? So if you apply the formula, you're going to have u times integration of v is minus cos x, sorry, cos u, right? Um, minus integration of differentiation of u is going to be 1 times integration of v, which is sine u, integration of sine u is going to be minus cos, minus cos u dx. So, it is minus u cos u minus, what is the integration of this now? The integration of that, uh, which is, sorry, you can take the minus outside. So, it's going to be positive. So, integration of cos u, what is the integration of cos? Sine. Very simple. Sine u, right? So, this is your final integrated expression. Does it math with our answer over here? Minus u cos u plus, yeah. Minus u cos u plus sine u. So, this is your integrated expression. Okay. So, the limits are going to be, of course, from pi to 0. Why? Because I've substituted over here from before. So, if you notice, when your x was 0, what is your u? If x is 0, your u is going to be 0 as well. If your x is pi squared, which was initially your upper bound, so if your x is pi squared, take the root, it's going to be pi, right? So your u, your uh, upper bound now is going to be pi. Lower bound, 0. So yeah, so you have to fix your upper and lower bound as well. And this is where a lot of the cases you're going to do the mistake. So remember to change your bound every single time that you use, um, you know, any sort of substitution, right? So if you substitute your value with any other expression, right? In this case, we're substituting u. With the expression root of x, you need to change your bounds accordingly. Okay, so this is your integrated value. Now, it's very simple. You just need to plug in pi. And if you plug in pi, your final answer is going to be 2 pi, right? Okay, so this is your final answer, 2 pi. This is your area under the curve. Okay, question 4. Um... Use substitution, use the old strip OSX to show that this long expression is this long expression. Okay. Um, they're not asking you to integrate. They're asking you to simply uh, use u substitution to make an expression that is possible to integrate, right? And that is in terms of u. So let's first work with q. And it's going to be... Since u is equal to cos x, take the derivative on the other side, it's going to be du by dx. And uh, the, the differentiation of cos x is going to be a minus sine x, right? So, du by dx is minus sine x. And on this side, notice, you have sine 2x. Whereas the entire question and your... Uh, u substitution value and du by dx is all in terms of x, not in any double angle um, expression. Okay, so over here what we can do is we can use double angle identities, which is sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cos x. So if you apply that over here, what that does is brings everything as a trig function of x, not double angles. And that's going to make it easier to substitute u. Okay. So you have 2 sin x cos x times e to the power 2 cos x. First few things that you do 
substitute all cos x uh, expression with u. So this is going to be u. This is going to be u. Fair enough. So the next thing you do is substitute this dx with um oh you can dx can do something else so yeah you can uh substitute cos x with u substitute cos x with u and notice over here we have two sine x but what do we have over here minus sine x so what you can do is first thing take two outside take two outside and have a multi uh, sorry have a negative sign out of the integral and bring another negative sign inside the integral. What that does is minus times minus is positive. So you're not affecting the equation. But what you're doing is by bringing the negative sign, you're getting minus sign x. How does that help you? You can directly now input du by dx. So you can directly now input du by dx to get the entire expression in terms of u and not x. So you finally get du by dx times, remember to substitute cos x with u, u times e to the power of, again, substitute and e to the power of 2u. And your dx is going to get cancelled by another dx in the denominator. Now, also remember, at the same step that you substitute the expression, you also have to change the bound. You also have to change the bound. And I've done that in the next step where I've changed the bounds from pi to 0 to minus 1 and 1. How did that happen? If your x value is pi, if your x value is pi, your u value is x value is pi, u value is going to be minus 1, right? When um, x is pi, Cos, is, cos x is going to be minus 4. And when x is 0, when x is 0, your u is going to be 1. So that's how you set your bounds. So upper bound, minus 1. Lower bound, 1. Minus 1, 1. Fair enough. So now you have the entire thing in terms of u. However, we wanted the bound to be from minus 1 to 1, not 1 to minus 1. So, our bounds, in this case, is the exact opposite of what they want. Our expression is also not the same. It is minus 2 u e to the power 2 u, whereas their one is positive. So, what do we do over here? So, I've added a small note over here for you to understand. But simply, if I try to explain this in a few steps, Notice one thing, I'm just giving you another example just so that you understand this better. If you integrate, let's say, the sine x curve from 0 to pi, your area is positive, which is 2. Now, if you integrate the same curve from pi to 0, from pi to 0, your area becomes negative because you're, you have changed your lower and upper bound. So, if I want to keep, let's say if I want to keep the value, the expression inside the expression, the area, I mean, the area positive, what can I do? What can I do such that I integrate from pi to zero, but also have my expression, I mean, area as minus two? You can simply add a minus sign over here. Because you're telling the expression that whatever it, my area is, it is going to be positive. Whatever my area is, it's going to be positive. Because from pi to 0, you know the area you're getting is minus 2. So if you add a minus in front of it, the final answer is going to be positive. So what we understand from this in summary is if you reverse the signs if you re sorry if you reverse the bounds and add a minus sign inside the integral your area does not change your area will remain positive but you have to add a minus sign inside of the integral 
inside with the expression. So that's what we are going to do over here. We reverse our bounds to 1 and minus 1 and add a minus sign over here. What that does is it keeps our area as positive or as negative, whatever it's supposed to be. Whatever it's supposed to be, it's going to keep it as it is. It's not going to mess with your sign of the area that you get, right? So that is why we add a minus sign over here and it in turn becomes positive. So that is sort of the tricky part of this question. And that is your question four. All right, question five. This is somewhat easy. It's not difficult actually, but yeah. So this question, first of all, it's asking you to break it down in partial fraction. So how do you do that? Take one of the denominator, a by 1 plus 2x, because a degree less than the denominator is going to be a constant. Fair enough. Next, take 2 minus x whole to the power 2, 2 minus x whole to the power 2. And since it is an expression that can be factorized, you take your numerator as a constant as well. Then you have 2 minus x so that you don't lose any value, any um, factor. So you have c by 2 minus x. There is also another way to do this where you take uh, most likely a by 1 plus 2x plus bx plus c divided by 2 minus x whole square. Even in this case, the answer you're going to get is going to be the same because you're already considering another constant over here. So, um, that will give you your answer as well. These are two ways to do this. Okay, so I'm going to stick with this one because this is, I guess, more straightforward. Okay, so this part, what I do is basically LCM, nothing else. So, do LCM and you're going to get... So, for A, A is going to be multiplied with... 2 minus x whole squared, which is going to be 4 minus 4x plus x squared. So this this part, right? And b is going to be multiplied with uh, 1 plus 2x, so b, pl b plus 2bx, right? And c will be multiplied with both 1 plus 2x and 2 minus x. That's going to be 2 minus x plus 4x minus 2x squared. Doesn't match. So this part is going to be 3x. So yeah, it does match. Right. So if you simplify everything down, you can take the constants the x and the x squares. So, this is one of your equations. This is another equation and this is another equation. If you solve all of these simultaneously, you're going to get, you're going to get a is equals to minus 4, b is equals to 5, and c is equals to minus 3. And you can do that directly in your calculator. And this is your partial fraction equation, right? Okay. So, first part is done. Second part, what do you do? They're asking you uh, to integrate from 0 to 1 and show this is your expression. How do you do that? So what I usually do is I'll take the integral individually for each expression. That makes it easier to do. So integral for this part, for this part, and this part. Fair enough. So over here, um, I'm going to apply the same uh, equation as before which is for the lawn, I mean same formula, sorry, as before, which is the formula for lawn, that if you have the derivative of the denominator in the numerator, you can apply lawn function. It's going to be lawn of denominator, right? So can we apply that over here? Let's see, let's try. What is the differentiation, differentiation of uh, the denominator 1 plus 2x? It's going to be 2. Do we have 2 over here? No. We have minus 4. But can we take common? Yes, we can take common. 
we can take minus two outside to have two over here. So now we can apply ln over here. So ln of one plus two x is going to be your integrated value, right? After integration, that is. Okay, so the limit is one and zero. For this part, what happens? Use the normal, uh, I mean, integration formula that you know from AS or O level that five times two minus x to the power minus two. If you integrate this value, five, two minus x to the power of minus two plus one, divided by minus two plus one, all of this times the differentiation of minus x, which is minus one. So ultimately you're left with five times two minus x to the power minus one, or better written as two minus x, five by two minus x. So this is what you get. This, sorry, this is what you get. Okay, so for this part, what do we do? Very simple. Again, use the ln formula once again. You're going to take, um, okay, so first thing is what is, what is the di uh, derivation, sorry, differentiation of 2 minus x, it is minus 1. So you want minus 1 in the numerator. So take the 3 outside, take 3 outside and put this minus 1 in the numerator. So you'll get minus 1 divided by 2 minus x and take the positive 3, positive 3 outside. Take the positive 3 outside and you will be having minus 1 as a numerator. So in that case, you have f prime x divided by f of x. So you can apply the ln formula. So ln of 2 minus x and the bounds are going to be from 0 to 1. So now you can apply the bound and it's going to be... So if you apply 2, 1 over here, it's going to be ln of 3. If you apply 0 over here, it's going to be 0. So minus 2 ln 3 plus 5 uh, minus if you apply 0 over here, it's going to be 5 by 2. So 5 minus 5 by 2 minus if you apply 1 over here, it's going to be 0. If you apply 0 over here, ln 2. So you're going to be getting minus 3 ln. So if you simplify all of this, what I did basically is ln to the power 3 minus 2 um, plus 5 by 2 simplifying this, my, uh, sorry, plus ln to the power, sorry, ln of 2 to the power minus 3. And if you simplify this, what you're going to be getting is um, ln of 3 to the power minus 2 is basically sorry, my 3 squared. All right, 9. Uh, so you get ln of 1 by 9 plus ln of, why did I give 2 minus sign? Okay, ln of 1 by 8. So if you have two logarithmic function being added with the same base, you can multiply. So you have 1 by 72, right? And again, don't forget about plus 5 by 2, plus 5 by 2. But you want the 72 as a numerator. So what you do is ln of 72 to the power minus 1. Bring this minus 1 in front. And it's going to be minus ln 72 plus 5 by 2. Final answer, 5 by 2 minus ln 72. This is your final answer. And that's question 5. And that's it for this video. See you in the next video.